Hello, everyone. Welcome to the workshop I'm doing last minute on releasing racism. I'm really excited that you're here. I'm going to take my little headset out. Um, so I'd love for this to be an interactive presentation. I know not everyone's going to be watching this live, but I hope that you still get a lot out of it because we're going to be diving into the realm of shamanism and connecting with our, our ancestors and our guides to help remove personal blocks that we might have unknowingly or knowingly about prejudices or racisms, either about other people and, and other groups of people and also about ourselves. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to do this important work, because really from from what I believe is that if we're all willing to show up and do the personal work, even if we feel like there might just be tiny little bits of lingering prejudices, if we can do any personal work to go in and excavate what no longer serves the greater collective, then we end up creating a better world and a better place. So thank you so much for showing up today and I'm really excited to support you. So before we go into it, I just wanna talk about what we'll be doing today. Um, besides journeying to those old blocks and prejudices to remove them, we're also gonna be digging up unconscious beliefs that we have about ourselves. And we're also gonna be learning a little bit about what's going on in the world right now with the veil lifted so our guides can give us a bigger picture and also what our personal next steps are in navigating this world, helping, helping the collective come together in a good way to create justice and equality for all groups of people, no matter what they look like, where they come from or what they believe or you know what bodies we've in manifested in, in this lifetime. Because we've all been born into a family, whether we've chosen it consciously or not, to be able to learn important lessons and I truly believe that some of that is how we choose the families that we come into because there are certain lessons that our soul wants to move through so that we can evolve as human consciousnesses, but also as a collective. And so I'd love to hear now a few people in the room who's here and where you're coming from and maybe a little bit about a temperature check of where you're at. I know a lot of things are are happening in the world right now. And I just want to do a quick check in for who's here with me. Feel free to use the chat box. I'm going to be uh, communicating with you all like that. Now, I really wanted to share a little bit about why I'm doing this workshop. Uh, I didn't expect to be doing this workshop, honestly. Uh, a couple days ago when the protests were happening, I was feeling this really strong drive to support my brothers and sisters of color and to step into the realm of, of doing what I could. And I also feel like, you know, there's protests going on. There's a lot of things, you know, you can step into to, to, to support others and move and progress uh, with what's happening and, and stand in alignment to ask for justice for all. But sometimes the best work that we can do is actually deepen ourselves because it does reverberate out. And my guides came to me and they said, Kristen, you're teaching a workshop on healing racism. And I was like, okay, all right, why? And my guides came and they started to show me how racism affects all of us. When one of us is out of balance, all of us are out of balance. And they, they showed this to me in a, a little bit of a vision that I wanted to share with you and open up today. So as we start the workshop and go into our own experiential, because this is an experientially based workshop, that you'll be diving in and journeying. My guides told me that we needed to open it up with a ceremony to honor the directions, but also honor the elements. And they gave me this teaching. They said that, the elements have been out of balance. And if we think about the elements like people of different racial groups or different color, or different stands in society at now, if you look at like the 1% who is predominantly white men um, and looking at different ways that we've just become out of balance in representing the whole, my guide said it's like the, the elements being out of balance. Now, if you have too much water, you get lots of floods, you get lots of rain, and it can wash away all of what you've built. And if you have too much fire, it'll burn everything down. If we have too much wind, then we get storms and we have trees collapse into houses and power lines. And if we have too much earth, well, I haven't figured that one out yet, but what my guides were trying to say is that it's important for all the elements to be in balance and using the elements as sort of, um, a way to explain that people are out of balance right now. Groups of people who have been in power are not allowing other people to rise into who they're truly meant to be. And this is a time of sort of hearing in my head the great reckoning, 
but for a time that we can find out how we can come into balance with ourselves, with those around us, with all communities, honoring all life. And now if you know me, you know that I do, I'm a soul retrieval specialist. I live and breathe shamanism. And my work is to help people who have been disempowered to get their life light back without having to get stuck in years of therapy to actually make those shifts. And I'm all for the underdog. And at this point, we really do have to look at how we affect one group of people, how that affects the whole. And as we're able to see at this moment of global warming and lots of collapses happening in our society, thanks to a lot of wonderful planetary influences that are essentially weeding out what no longer works in our political systems and in our structures, because we have this Pluto conjunct Jupiter conjunct Saturn that is happening as a stellium in the sky. It's going to hit everyone's personal chart in a different way. But what we're seeing happening as a collective is all of these plants are happening in Capricorn around the same point in which we had similar planetary placements in the year that the Declaration of Independence was created. So what happens with any Saturn's return, especially when Pluto is there that likes to dig up what's not working and make it so blatantly obvious that you can no longer resist change. And then we have Jupiter who expands everything. So if we didn't think we had a big problem already, now it's being magnified. All the things that aren't working, followed by Saturn, who's also here to offer some structures. But Pluto is showing where the old structures are no longer serving because in the United States, at least, you know, this is where I live. And I think many of us who are tuning in right now, we have been in this position where the, the country that we've been founded on was founded on slavery. You know, slaves were brought over from the old world and into the Americas. And we also had an annihilation of the indigenous people that lived in North America before that. So if we look at what our foundations are in the collective, we see that they just don't work anymore. They don't align with the collective values. And there are a few old ways of thinking that are, are holding onto those old structures. But you know, my, my truth is that I believe that the universe is really asking us to do this deep soul level work on ourselves and the collective to be able to break through what no longer works and give us the structures that we need to be able to step into what that is that's in perfect alignment for us all to survive and move forward as a unified force to save this world and step into the next generation, this new great awakening and this new chapter of humanity. So Thank you so much for joining me. I'm not going to waste too much more time about the visions I've had or, you know, what else is going on. But I just wanted to check in with who's here and what you've shared. And then I want to jump into the experiential because this is going to be an amazing opportunity for you to heal parts of yourself that you probably didn't even know existed and find a way to create support for those around us. Because once you heal yourself, you heal all of us, especially if we're working on these prejudice and racist beliefs. Once we excavate those, we create so much more space in the world removing ties from our ancestors that no longer serve now so that we can move forward in a unified way. So hi, Lorena. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Nicole. My lovely ladies. Uh, Lorena says from Connecticut, I'm happy to see all this change going on. It's powerful and impactful. I've been trying to learn more about racism in general and see how I can get involved. So thank you, Lorena. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy that you're tuning in, all of you. And this is exactly the place where we're going to be shifting these patterns. So if there's nothing else that you can do and you have friends, like I have friends who are paralyzed with not knowing what to do or how to take action, send them this. This is going to be an opportunity for them to do the unconscious work to help our consciousness as a collective. Tanya's from Brooklyn. Hey, Tanya. You're here to deepen your own self-awareness and internalize, internalize racism. Ah, I can't talk today. It doesn't matter because spirits are going to move through us and uh, we're going to be able to tap into our divine wisdom. So you won't have to hear from me too much longer. And hi, Nicole from New York. So I'm so happy you're here. And anyone else who tunes in at any future date, I'm so excited to hold this container for us. And as my guides asked me to open up the ceremony, they've basically given me the whole notes on this entire workshop. So, um, you know, this is this is just channeled through what my guides are asking to, to move through for all of us as I have some cat fur in my eye. So please excuse me if I uh, I'm doing this throughout the call. So. My guide said that for us to start today, it was really important to bring through the elements. So I wanted to show you that here in the background, I have all of the elements here, including some beautiful dirt and compost. We've got some crystals and stones from the earth to represent the earth. I have a bowl of water here and some water with my plants, also representing the fruit of the earth. 
and the accumulation of the, the fire from the sun and what grows when we have the elements in balance, right? And also I have this candle here that I'm, I'm gonna light now, just calling in our helping spirits, angels, guides, all of our ancestors, calling in the cardinal directions, the north, the south, the east, the west, mother earth and father sky, calling in fire, calling in water, calling in earth, calling in air, and then the Chinese zodiac also calling in the element of wood and calling in the element of metal, just to cover all of our bases here. So as we have fire, I want to join fire with air. And the best way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna light some sage here and ask spirit to just clear the space of consciousness that we have right now so that we can step into full alignment with who we're truly meant to be and do this deep healing work today for ourselves and for the collective. So just bringing a little bit of sage in for you all, sage for the world. We need a lot of sage for that. But we're all coming together, and this is a moment of opportunity. I was listening to some astrology for what's going on right now because we're about to jump into eclipse season starting tomorrow. Um, this is a moment for us to make peace with the past and to let go of what we no longer need so that we can step into creating these new possibilities. So I'm happy that you're here today so we can co-create that. So what I wanted to do today was I wanted to guide us on like one big long shamanic journey. So I have my drum here. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what that looks like for any of you who are new to shamanism and to shamanic journey. So shamanism is a big umbrella that covers lots of different indigenous wisdoms. We can look at wisdoms from individual cultures. We can look at core shamanism and what is consistent cross-culturally among many different cultures. We can see that through the lens of shamanism that we are all connected and that we are all one. So what has happened to George Floyd, for example, is affecting all of us because it's a butterfly effect. In essence, that any suffering that happens to one individual creates suffering in all of us and in the collective. And so for an order for us to move forward, we do have to heal these different aspects of ourselves so that we can heal others and the collective. And so what indigenous cultures did many, many hundreds of thousands of years ago, shamanism has been around for really truly more than 40,000 years, but 40,000 years since they've been able to essentially date back petroglyphs and um, carvings in caves to be able to see that there was this, this element of indigenous wisdom that was being shared. And so what indigenous humans used to do was in order to first divine food source for their communities, they would go into a trance-like state, usually the shaman or the healer of the group, to divine information from the buffalo or from the deer or from the bison to connect with the energy of the food source that would then ask them to, to go to a certain region to find them and they would sacrifice themselves. Now, shamanism has evolved quite a bit and we're no longer divining food sources in the same way. I mean, maybe if you live out in the middle of nowhere, that's a really good skill to have, but it's also used to be able to connect in with the divine wisdom that is already imprinted in our soul, in our higher self, with our spirit guides and with our ancestors. And so this becomes a really great tool, just like a very deep meditation. The beat of the drum actually brings you into a theta brainwave state where a lot of energy can move. You can have divine wisdoms that come through you. You might also fall asleep because it's very close to that sleepfulness state. So if you find yourself just kind of teetering in and out of consciousness, that's totally normal. And I'm just going to ask that you try your best to hold the intention of healing these belief systems that no longer serve so that when we go into the journey, that you're able to hold on to that intention and not get lost in sleepy land. Although if you need to fall asleep, that's okay too. That doesn't mean that healing isn't happening with the collective. Um, and if you do, then listen to this recording another time and you'll be able to do more deep layers of the work. So when my guides came, they said that it was important for us to be able to connect in with our ancestors because a lot of what we hold as prejudice or racist beliefs are actually passed down to us through our lineage my guides come in to say that there's, you know, they don't want to shame anyone. They want to bring awareness. And when you have awareness, shame moves because you realize that some beliefs that you've had unconsciously, some of what may be conscious, actually aren't even yours and have just been passed down to you. So this exercise is going to be sort of like a cleaning of those lines using the elements. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be imagining that we're gonna be going down into the center of the earth, going into a cavern to meet with our helping spirits, 
our team of guides, our ancestors and angels and whoever wants to show up. Usually I just take you on the journey to meet one guide, but now we're really calling in the forces here. And when we go into that space and I'll be guiding you through this, we will also be calling on water, earth, fire, air and asking those elements to help cleanse us of what no longer serves. And I'm going to ask you in this space, move with whatever way of releasing these, um, these ideas and these prejudices that come up. Uh, when I was doing this exercise, I was giving a lot of it to the fire that felt right, but feel free to play with whatever element wants to help cleanse you. Or maybe it's all of the elements help to take and release and transmute these belief systems. So in that space, we're going to unravel some of the prejudices that we have had unconsciously, but then we're also going to move into releasing some of the prejudices that we have about ourselves. And my guides are telling me, tell the story, tell the story. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell the story. So when I first went into this journey trance to divine this workshop, right? The guides are like, you're teaching this workshop, go into your journey space, download it. We're going to give it to you, right? This is how I do everything in my life, pretty much all of my workshops. And it was in that space that I was met with this, this black man. And he came to me and he said that he had had another lifetime where he was this, he was on a plantation as a slave. And he said that it was really important for people of all color to do this workshop because of the prejudices that get ingrained in the psyche and then limit potential. So this particular soul that came to me said, that he no longer had self-esteem to believe in himself and believe that he could be capable of creating change in the world and creating what he really wanted. He said because his power had been taken and these belief systems projected onto him, that there was a sense of almost like stunting his personal growth because he he now had these false beliefs about himself that were projected on. And so my guide said that it's really important for us to see that all of us have this. And that it doesn't matter where we come from or, you know, what our ancestral line is, that there's prejudices that we carry about ourselves that might actually have nothing to do with race, but that are here that are blocking us from moving forward because these wounds are here. And if we have the wounds inside, we're reflecting them on the outside. And the truth is we're seeing a lot of suffering. So we know that the more that we can heal our own suffering and heal these discrepancies in our soul, the more we're able to show up more fully, shine our light and help heal others. So my guide said it was really important for us to make sure that we are looking at where we have held these beliefs because they said even more than some of the prejudices that we're projecting are coming from a place where we're prejudiced ourselves. So it's locking our energy on both sides. And that was the message I was getting and the guidance about why we're going to be doing this exercise today. Um, I'm trying to think, was there anything else spirit that you wanted to say? Okay. They say, no, get into it. So with that being said, thank you for showing up through my little explanation. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving into a guided meditation. So again, if you've never done a shamanic journey before, I'm going to be here gently guiding you. Remember that when you journey, don't be so hard on yourself about the thoughts that come in. Be like a child whose heart is open to play because that's when the messages come through. Sometimes we can second guess the images or the visions or the things we hear. Some people will have no visions. Some people might hear an animal noise or they might see block letters across, you know, across your vision, or you might just have a sense or a feeling. So whatever way the spirit wants to talk to you, allow it, see what's there, because there's a message in that way that you're receiving it and just be open to the process of whatever comes through. So again, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be imagining that we're going to go into nature to find a hole in the ground. Maybe it's a cave. Maybe it's a hole inside of a tree. Maybe the tree has a door and you could open up and go inside. Whatever feels right to you, then we're going to move down into the center of the earth, call on our team of spirit guides. We're going to ask them for a temperature check of what's going on in the world. We're going to heal prejudices of others and heal them for ourselves. We're going to get some next steps and then we're going to come out and process together as a group. Sound good? All right, so just taking a deep breath in and out. Taking another deep breath in from all of the energy that you've been seeing on social media and let that go, <sighs> making a noise if you need to. Taking in a deep breath of all that you're feeling from the collective and release it. <sighs> releasing 
all that energy and taking another deep breath in for self and releasing that, feeling yourself ground into the space and time of now, finding a comfortable place to sit or to lie down. If it helps to turn the lights off or to get a scarf to put over your eyes, sometimes that helps to have a good journey to remove distractions. But I just want you to take a moment to really feel yourself in your body, imagining that you have roots going from the soles of your feet that are now moving like roots budding into the earth, grasping for that soil, for those nutrients, feeling those roots move all the way out, spreading out in their depth and in their length, in their circumference in the earth, just seeing those roots spread as you anchor in, feeling yourself just kind of sit into that earth energy, taking a deep breath to pull it in from the earth, in from those roots, bringing that breath in all the way up through those roots into your body and into your heart. And I want you to imagine that from your heart, moving a line of light of your intention to bring healing to yourself and others and the collective and the world and to all people of all colors and all belief systems. I want you to imagine that that light from your heart goes all the way into the top of your head and that beam of light begins to peek out through the top of your head and go all the way up, 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 up into all the different layers of stratosphere, all the way up past the sun, all the way up past the solar system, into the realm in which the angels are, in which your higher self is, calling in your higher self, calling in your protection, calling in your divine wisdom, and asking the energy of your truest higher self to come down that beam of light into your body. Only that which is your true perfect energy comes in as increased awareness. And imagine that as so above and so below, you come together in this vessel that is your human body. And whatever color you chose to be, whatever race, whatever background, whatever age, whatever gender along the spectrum, just honoring that you came in this vessel today and that you chose this for a reason to learn lessons and that you can still bring empowerment and love from this vessel in all ways by healing yourself. And now taking that energy of groundedness, keeping your eyes closed, bringing in the drum beat to ground us in. I want you to imagine that you're walking through the woods. And as you walk, you feel called to a certain area. Your heart is calling you, so go. And as you get closer to that hole in the earth, I want you to Know this, that it's big enough for you to fit inside. Knowing that with your higher self and with your guides by your side, it's safe to travel and to go inward. So I want you to imagine that you begin to move through this hole in the ground. Moving down, down down through the different layers of sediment, feeling the cold earth against your skin, bringing in all the sensations of moving down into the center of the earth. And as you look down that tunnel, you notice that there's a light on the other side. Move towards that light until you notice that it brings you out to a whole new realm And from this new landscape, I want you to put the call out from your heart for your ancestors to come and to show themselves in whatever way you can see them. Ask our ancestors to show up now in this time and space. Know this who's there.
And now we call on our power animals and our guides in all forms that they take, those that are helping spirits that are here to assist us in healing and moving prejudices within ourself. Asking your guides to show up and just see who's there. Calling on our angels and any other helping guides that want to make themselves known. And calling in the elements, calling in fire. Calling on air, calling on earth, calling on water. And in my vision, I see Eagle is here, and Eagle wants to make itself known that it's showing a different vantage point. Bird's eye view. And with that, as you see your ancestors and your guides around you, I want you to ask them to reveal to you what's really going on under the surface in the world right now. What is going on in the world under the surface around me right now? And see what wisdom your guides share with you. What else do we need to know about what's going on at this time? What else do we need to know about what is going on right now? And now I want you to ask from help for help from your guides to show you, to reveal to you what is one racist or prejudiced belief that you have in your being that is ready to be released and healed. What is one prejudiced or relate racist belief that I have that is ready to be healed? And just notice what comes up. If you're not clear, you can ask your guides the question again and ask them to show you in a way that you can understand. Allow this first belief to make itself known.
I want you to ask where this belief came from. Where did this belief come from? And as you're ready to release this belief, I want you to call on an element that resonates. Or whatever element comes up first to be able to help transmute this energy. Perhaps you put it into the water and the stream takes it away. Or the fire transmutes it. Perhaps the wind carries it back to source, back to creator. Or maybe it's buried in the earth, ready to decompose, and decompose in the earth. Surrender this belief to any element that resonates. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I want to call upon the next racist or prejudiced belief that is in our being, asking our ancestors and our guides to make clear what is that next belief that we are ready to let go of, that is limiting us about others, and see what comes up. If you're not sure what's coming up, ask for clarity. What is that second prejudice, racist belief? Spirit, make it clear, show us. And once you see it, I, add, I want you to ask, where did this belief come from? And when you're ready to release it, ask for the elements to come and to support you to transmute it now. Handing it over to the element that comes to move that energy for you in a good way. Asking our guides and our ancestors to reveal to us what is the third prejudice, limiting belief that we have about others. Just notice what comes up. Asking where did this belief originate? Where did it come from?
And when you're ready, I want you to imagine releasing it to the elements now. Watching it move and be transformed, shifted, transmuted. And asking our ancestors and guides if there's one other limiting belief or racist belief that needs to be transmuted now, bring it to the surface, show us what it is. What is the fourth limiting belief about others that I need to release? Asking where did this originate? Where did this come from? And now I want you to release that limiting belief into one of the elements. Allowing it to move fully. And now I want you to imagine that your guides and your ancestors and the angels are coming around you and holding a really tight circle, sending you their love. Because now it's time to move into releasing prejudices that you have about yourself. Ask your angels, your ancestors, your guides to help you identify what is one limiting belief that you have about yourself that's ready to go? What is one limiting belief or prejudice you have against yourself? Allow it to make itself known now. See what it is. And as these painful things come up for self, I want you to pull on your support if you need a hug from one of your guides, if you need that extra closeness, to honor what's coming up for you. Know that your guides and your support are here to help you. As you get clear about what this first limiting belief about self is, I want you to ask where it came from. Where did this begin? Ask yourself if you're ready to release this. If you're not, ask why. Calling on the elements to come into align with you to help you release this. Choose an element or allow it to choose you and surrender that belief. Watch it be transmuted.
As the energy clears, I want you to imagine calling back your energy, your true self, maybe parts of you that left because of that belief. Calling back your power now. Now I want you to identify what is a second limiting belief that you have about yourself that you're ready to release. Ask your guides and angels to make it clear if it's not. Show me that second limiting belief about self. See what comes up. Where did this belief originate? And surrender it to the elements as you're ready. Allow them to take it from you and transmute it in front of your eyes. I want you to call up what is one more limiting belief or prejudice that you have about yourself. Call it forward. Call it to the light. Allow your ancestors and your guides to help you see it clearly now. Where did this thought come from? And when you're ready, release it to the elements. Allow them to take it and transmute it for you. Calling back your energy, your power. Calling back all of you now that you've released what no longer serves. Now I want you to turn to your guides to ask them if they have any more wisdoms for you that you need to know at this moment. And now I want you to ask, what are your next action steps that you can take to bring justice, equality, healing, and love to all? Show us what our next steps are. What can we do now to propel this movement forward in a positive way that honors all life? What are our next steps in creating that brighter, better future?
asking if there's any last messages that we need to know before we end the journey and come back. Any last messages from our ancestors or angels or guides around us. saying thank you so much to all of your guides and your angels and your power animals. Thanking them and thanking the elements for transmuting all of those beliefs and making more space. Allowing your guides to co-create a vision of a better, healthier world and see that in your heart. Saying thank you, goodbye, giving them hugs and high fives and beginning to retrace those steps. All the way back from that meeting room, all the way back, all the way up, 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 up to different layers of sediment, all the way up to that hole in the earth, all the way up from that place in nature and all the way back to your body, to this time and place of now where you are in real time. Taking a deep breath in and out, slowly come back to this time and space of now. And I'd love to just use the next few minutes to open up for any dialogue with anything that came up for anyone who's uh, participated on this call. I'd love to hear from you if there are any things that surprised you either about belief systems about others or beliefs that you had about yourself and if there was anything that shifted for you. And if things didn't shift and you weren't able to get into the meditation, this is going to have a recording. So you'll always have the opportunity to go back and do these exercises again. And I can say from myself personally, I've cleared so many things the last couple of days using the, you know, this, this formula that my guides gave me for this workshop. Um, and I was actually really surprised to see how much came up around women's disempowerment. Um, personally, right now for this few minutes, um, there was some, other thoughts that came up, but a lot of it was about like, women are also minorities, right? In, in some ways. So um, things are gonna come up for different people at different times. Um, like I said, I did this exercise a, a last couple of days in a row and it's moved something different every time. Um, so I'd love to hear if there's anyone that wanted to share what came up for them during that process. And like I said, it, it may be different for everyone. It's gonna be different every time you do this exercise. Mm. And just, you know, as I'm, as I'm waiting for anyone who does want to share and you don't have to, if you don't want to, I just want to thank you all so much for showing up and doing this deep level of work, knowing that this is a tool that you can always come back to with your guides that always want to create healing and create the support for the evolution of all of us. So I really would encourage you to, um, to know that you have those, that those supports. Um, so Lorena says insecurities I've held about myself came up about feeling me feeling superior to others, also feeling inferior to others. And I want to say, Lorena, I mean, isn't that interesting? It's like we can have both ends of the spectrum inside where we can we can feel, you know, all the things. So I think that that's really valid. And I really I really love that that was able to come up for you so that you could release that. Um, I know in, in this workshop for me today, a lot of that came up about like, you know, am I, am I good enough to, to do these things in the world? Am I, you know, like all these self-limiting beliefs. So those things do hold us back and they do limit us. So thank you, Lorena, for being brave and sharing that. And I really just hope that you all have a takeaway from this and that this, um, that this can be a tool that you have access to always. So unless there's anyone else that wants to say anything, I want to honor your time and thank you so much. Uh, oh, here's Nicole. Nicole says, thank you. This is great. Yes, I think if, if, yes, I think the, if we feel things about others, they are projections of our own feelings about ourselves. Exactly. Um, and that's what my guides were really trying to, to share, to bring this up as a topic of discussion of, 
if we if we choose not to do healing on ourselves, if we say, oh, I've done all the work, oh, I'm not prejudiced and all those things, we forget that a lot of the prejudices that we hold are about ourselves. And if we're not ready to deal with them, they are coming out unconsciously, usually as projections. So I think that that's really wise, Nicole, and that you already see that. And that, and that creates part of the imbalance because if there's part of us that aren't strong, we're projecting this out onto others. So I hope that you got something out of this workshop. I'm really happy that you came here to, to play with me in shamanism. Uh, Nicole says one more thing. I found that the prejudice to have others, I found them about me as well. Exactly, right? So that's the teaching moment, Nicole. I don't even have to say it. It sounds like that's it. You know, what we have about ourselves or things that we have about others or things that we think aren't about ourselves, about others tend to, it's, it's as above, so below, as within, so without. So um, I really want to encourage you to continue to do this internal work. Will says, my ancestors were slave owners for six generations. The work to redeem that will take a long time. And Will, I'm so glad that you have said that because we have to acknowledge not only our ancestry and even if we choose a different path, it's karmic. It's like we choose to do the work and to come from certain lineages to unravel what's there. And sometimes that's a, that's a past life connection. Um, you know, something that I don't usually share about is that I had a past life where I was a black slave on a plantation and my father was my slave owner who would beat me because of his own insecurities and because he was unhappy with life, he took that out on me. And so knowing that it's not just this in this lifetime, these ancestral bonds that we have that are very real and the, the beliefs that are passed down, but there might also be some level of unconscious energies from previous lifetimes. And so it's important to look back as far as we can see, and sometimes we can't see that far back, but our guides have those vantage point, right? The eagle who came in at the last minute and really wanted me to interject and say the eagle was there to give us this new level of vision that takes us out of the drama so we can view it. One of the things that the astrologer I was listening to today to talk about the eclipse season coming in is that when we're in it, it seems to make sense. But if we can take a step back to look at what we're actually doing in the world and some of the rules or regulations or the way that we're treating certain people through a looking glass, through a vantage point outside of it, we begin to realize that what we're doing in a lot of ways doesn't make any sense. And that gives us the opportunity to see that it's not working and decide to change it. So again, taking that bird's eye view, even of your own healing to see what came up for you and see how does this one belief that I have about myself, that I'm either not good enough or that, you know, I can't do X, Y, Z. How does that trickle out into how other people are feeling and, and experiencing? And how is it that we can do that work and then unravel those threads to the collective? Because like I said, if there's suffering going out on the world, there's also suffering going on inside. So Truly, there's so many ways that we can forward this movement. And I think one of the best ways, the easiest ways, maybe not the easiest, I think some people are afraid of doing that personal work, but we can do the work inside and we can do what we need to do to be able to shift those belief systems so that we can come into unison with all as a collective. Uh, Lorraine said, thank you so much. So needed right now. Nicole says, we are the way showers to heal the, to heal the wound. We have an amazing opportunity. Absolutely. And like I said, we can't heal the past. Will, you can't go back and make different choices for your ancestors, but know that you actually and absolutely came into this earth at this time to be able to heal some of that past. I believe that we here on this earth are very conscious souls that we chose to be here as adults in this time to make that positive change. And I started getting tears in my eyes, Will, because I'm like, I, you're a fucking godsend. So I shouldn't be cursing here. You're a godsend to your lineage to be able to unravel this work. Because when we do this work, we not only heal seven generations in the future, we also heal the seven generations in the past. It's, it's the rule of the seven generations and in some shamanic belief systems that you know, the work that we do now is affecting the timeline before and after us. And so I think that that's really beautiful, Will, that you are the seventh generation for those ancestors. So think about the healing that you can bring. And I know some of the work that you do, the shamanic healing work that you do in this world too. I mean, what a blessing to have such a conscious soul like you come in. And I want to honor everyone who's showing up to this call, anyone who's shown up to this point in the recording, that you are here to make a very powerful change. And do not think that you chose to show up right now during this crazy time to be a conscious human being. So I'm so grateful that you're all here. I'm so grateful that you are, 
you're you're on it. You know it. So I just want to encourage us all to continue to fight this fight because this fight is for humanity. It's for the collective. It's for it's for life. It's for Earth. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this deep work. Feel free to reach out to me if there's anything else that you want to share. Thank you so much. Mm, my love goes out to all of you. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Great Spirit, for coming in to bringing us these wisdoms. Thank you to the ancestors. Thank you to our guides. Thank you to the angels. Thank you so much to the elements that have helped us transmute. And I just pray that the the new way come and that we be those way showers, as as um as Nicole said so 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 beautifully. And Tony says, thank you so much, Kristen, for this ex exercise. It was deeply enriching for me. Wonderful. So I'll just keep blabbing on if I keep you here. So I'm just going to send you off in love and good vibes and we're changing the world. We're creating it now. So thank you for showing the F up to do your part. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye.